So in this lesson, I want to give you a big overview of prehistory and the Paleolithic period. Now, there's also another video uh, that gives you a more uh, rich visual version of what life would have been like for humans during the Paleolithic. This one is much more factual and gives you the spice overview of this time period. Now, make sure you've done the spice lesson at this point and also that you have your Coronel notes set up and that you're ready to go. As always, remember you can pause me and rewind me as much as you need to. So if I go too fast, just know that you're in control. Now I do have to warn you that there are going to be some very big, vague numbers ahead. Um, you know, we're dealing with large ranges of time here. We're not talking about a time period in which things were written down. And so the historical record is often created by biologists and archaeologists who are um, you know, dealing with big ranges of time, we also have to remember that human civilization is just not that old. We've only really been a civilized or had civilizations here for about 10,000 years. And so anything before that is a lot of times it's you know, analytical you know, guessing, it's inferences based on things like radiocarbon dating and the rate of genetic mutation in humans and plants and animals. And so, you know, that's why you're going to see very big, vague numbers here. Just kind of go with it. Um, you know, and this is going to be very brief, right? Most world history curricula only barely cover human prehistory. And this class is no different. We're going to have a quick couple quick lessons on this and a quiz. Um, and that's going to be a, pretty much it. Um, you do have to keep in mind that this lesson uses very big round numbers too. Right? And so if you're interested in some of the things that I'm talking about, and there's just not enough for you here, especially if you're interested in biology and the life sciences, then archaeology and human evolution would be a great topic for your first research paper. Right? And finally, you know, the history in this entire course only covers 0.27% of the time that this one lesson covers. So again, we're dealing with very big numbers here and very big time spans. All right, so first, you know, let's review the origin of humans. I know we looked at that in the David Christian uh, lesson, the big history lesson, but I want to run through this again, make sure it's in your notes, right? You know that humans evolved in East Africa, uh, some, somewhere near modern-day Kenya, um, probably in the Great Rift Valley or thereabouts. And we evolved from the hominids. Now, the hominids is a branch of the great apes. Um, and our nearest species relatives are chimpanzees and bonobos and, to a lesser degree, gorillas. We're, more, we're closer uh, to chimpanzees and bonobos. Um, and early types of hominids that you know, led to human beings or were um, genetic branches that didn't become humans that, that branched off from these hominids include Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, Homo georgicus, which is a, a reconstruction that you see in the middle there. Uh, Neanderthals, Cro-Magnons, Denisovians. There's a lot of very interesting work being done in this area right now. Scientists are discovering new branches of hominids all the time. Um, it's important to note though that we're all Homo sapiens. No matter what our race is or where our ancestors are from, we're all Homo sapiens. Uh, and actually Homo sapiens sapiens is the, the even more specific name for the species that we belong to. Right? And so the big evolutionary changes that these animals went through as they evolved into Homo sapiens, uh, first of all, leaving the trees, uh, walking upright, which um, caused the evolution of better vision, as well as now, you know, our ancestors had two free limbs to do things with. And as a part of that, they developed hands, as well as the development of language as we know it. Um, you know, many animals have what we call language, but there doesn't seem to be an animal on the planet who that, you know, makes sounds and signals as, as, as complexly as we do. And, you know, we looked at that in the, the David Christian lesson on big history as well. Right, so, you know, out of East Africa, you know, we've got a series of early human migrations. Now, we have to keep in mind, humans were walking. That's it. I mean, there's no boats, there's no airplanes, we're walking. Um, 
you know, and, and there are waves of hominids and early humans leaving Africa. It's not like people just got up one day and, and just started walking, right? Homo erectus and Homo ergaster probably left Africa about 1.3 to 1.8 million years ago. Uh, but the biggest e expansion of Homo sapiens, which once again did evolve in Africa, was probably somewhere around 40,000 to 60,000 years ago. Uh, and that's a long time, and this migration is very slow, right? We look at maps like this, and I'm going to show you a couple more. I'm going to show you another one, and it looks like, oh, you know, they just walk. But we have to keep in mind, these humans are expanding at a rate of less than a mile per year, right? So groups would kind of maybe use up the food in one area and just move a little bit, or a group would get too large, and, you know, a group of them would split off and, and move a little bit. But they're not, you know, picking up and moving from L.A. to Chicago. You know, they're moving from, you know, Federal Way to Fife, right? They're moving from Des Moines to North Federal Way. They're not just, you know, picking up and going, on, you know, on a big trek here. Right, so you know, we look at this map here, and this gives us a sense of the timeline, right? That KYA, K is for thousand, right? Like kilo, like you know, kilogram or kilometer, right? So KYA is a thousand years ago, right? So 195,000 years ago is what this um, map argues is, you know, the evolution of human beings. And so we can see, you know, human beings didn't reach um, North America until something like. 15 or 25,000 years ago. I've seen numbers as high as 30,000 years ago. Um, right? So, I mean, if it takes, you know, to get from, you know, Siberia to Alaska, it takes, you know, 9, 10, 15,000 years. That shows you how slowly humans are expanding. Or if it takes, you know, 7,000 years from humans to move from what is now Iran to what is now Turkey, um, you know, that's very, very slow rate of expansion. Right. And so, you know, as humans migrate, as they set up early civilizations, our name for that is the Paleolithic period. Now, paleo stand is is a Greek word. It means old lithos is stone. Sorry, we're talking about the old Stone Age here. Right. And this new species, Homo sapiens, was and still is unique in its ability to skillfully use a variety of tools. And this was the period that started it all. Right. I mean, chimpanzees, seagulls, you know, they all rats, they seem to use basic tools, but, you know, they don't have computers and they don't even have things as complicated as the spears you see in front of you. Right. So the old Stone Age is when we're using stone tools. Right. And so, you know, geographically, I'm going to be talking about humans pretty much all around the world here. Right. For the rest of this course, we'll talk about civilizations that are in specific geographic locations like China or Africa or Mesoamerica. Right. But, you know, during the Paleolithic period, human civilizations seem to be pretty similar no matter where you look. Right. And we're, let's go through the spice factors now. And we're going to kind of roll together the social and political characteristics here. Right. Early humans lived in very small groups, usually based on clans. And so these were kind of like small groups of families, you know, like dad and uncle and, you know, aunt. And, you know, you may have, you know, groups as large as 30 or 40 people and all kind of related. Um, and this was really the basis for economic and political activity. It's all about the clan or the tribe. You know, these groups had some contact with each other for a very, very limited trade, although they didn't really have much to trade. The big thing would have been intermarriage, right? I mean, if you've got a group of 30 people together for 200 years, there's going to be some inbreeding, right? We don't want three-eyed babies here. So, you know, you've, you're going to have some, you know, contact to kind of trading of members, um, you know, to, to avoid intermarriage. And animals, including humans, seem to instinctively know, you know, you don't fool around with your sister. <laughs> right? Paleolithic interactions with the environment, right? So the eye and spice, right? Humans use simple tools made of bone and stone. Um, they didn't really have a whole lot of control over their environment. Um, you know, they were pretty much at the mercy of, of whatever nature wanted to do to them. But, you know, these early stone tools did enable humans to be able to manipulate nature a little bit. Um, of course, the big breakthrough is fire, right? And, um, you know, fire is probably the original human high technology. Um, and this is something no other animal has control over, right? And think about what you can do with fire, right? You scare off animals. You can clear land of brush. 
Um, you know, cooking, right? When you cook things like meat, it makes it more edible, makes it softer and easier to digest. It also makes it safer by killing off bacteria and germs and all kinds of yuckies, right? It also allows humans to live in more climates, right? And that's another unique thing about human beings. We live in more ecosystems than any animal in the world, including rats. I mean, and cockroaches are kind of nearest competitor, but no animal can live in as many ecosystems and environments as we can. And, and fire is a big part of that, right? What little we know about the cultural of the culture of these people, it's very limited, right? We don't have written records. You know, we have some cave art. And we're going to be looking at that uh, from this time period. We also have some like stone statues from this time period, very small ones that would have been, you know, people could carry around from place to place. Uh, most of the cultural record that we have is limited to carving, uh, painting. And oral art forms like songs and poetry, right? I mean, keep in mind, again, we're looking at a time period when people didn't know how to write. So any, you know, literature, as we would think of it, it has to be in people's memories, right? And I don't want to go too much into this because we're going to do a lot of work on, you know, Paleolithic cultures in our discussions. We're going to read some creation mythology and some early hero tales. Um, and so we're going to get a really good look at the culture of this time period. And finally, economics. I mean, really, there almost are no economics at this time period. Food's pretty much eaten as soon as it's gathered or killed. I mean, that's why we call these people hunter-gatherers. And that's a key vocabulary term you need in your notes, right? Hunter-gatherer. They hunt it or they gather it and they eat it pretty much right away. Maybe store for a little while, but not much. Uh, again, probably not much trade because there's not much to trade at this time period. I mean, people, you know... If maybe one tribe is better at making spears than another, they might trade a little bit, but but not much. Uh, most of this is sustenance based, right? To, sustenance means how you survive, how you sustain yourself. And so when you're talking about a sustenance economy like this, people got and made and did just enough to survive as clans and families. They didn't store things, right? And so that's it. That gives you a, a good clear overview of the Paleolithic period. Again, look at the other video for probably a little more interesting visuals, uh, a little more professionally produced. But this gives you the, the big spice overview of the Paleolithic period in early humans. Thanks for watching.